Greetings, everyone. Dr. Joe here. I hope each of you are well and blessed. I want to greet each of you on this amazing Sunday evening and afternoon. Here we are, two weeks post-process, but we're still in it. We're still connected, and we are excited to be together again. So I want to take some time to welcome all of you. Those of you who watch us live, congratulations. Those of you who are watching this archived, congratulations. We had a, a great village chat on last week um, with Miss Mary Morrison. It was great. And all the village chats have been wonderful because they revolve around the people. So I want to welcome each of you. So glad to see you guys. I hope all of you are doing well. And uh, we're going to have an interesting conversation. Now, tonight's conversation is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to bring on our guest. I'm going to introduce her. We're so excited and proud of her and honored that she is here with us on this evening. You'll hear more about her very, very soon. Uh, as well as after we finish chatting, we're going to talk about next session. Those of you who have pre-registered for the next session, what to expect, things of that nature, as well as the final component that I'm going to give you on tonight is a recommendation for those of you who at any point fall off the wagon, being that you come through the process, and you kind of get out of the habit and you need something to kind of get you back into the swing of things. I'm going to uh, share with you a master, uh, a pro tip. That's what I'm going to do. So we're excited. So once again, welcome to each of you. Our guest, my guest on tonight was our village 40 day turn up risers. MVP, Miss Helen Gilmore. And she is with us on tonight, and I'm going to bring her on. So I want you guys to welcome Miss Helen Gilmore. How you doing, Miss Helen? Hi, how are you? I'm good. You looking great. How you feeling this Sunday? Uh, feeling yeah. great. Looking great, feeling great. Looking great and feeling great, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank you for being my guest. Thank you. And um for agreeing to be a part. I'm so happy to have you. So you are a very, very special, special guest because not only were you the biggest loser, but you were the MVP. Tell us, Miss Helen, how much weight you lost? Uh, 42 pounds. 42 pounds. How does that feel to know that you're 42 pounds lighter in six weeks? That's oh my God. Oh my God, I never would have thought I would have lost 42 pounds in six weeks. But it feels awesome. I tell you, um, the most important part was commitment for me, and I did it. Wow. Well, congratulations. That, that's, uh, that's awesome. And we'll get more into your story and, 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 and like how you did it and things of that nature. But let's start off by just finding out finding out about yourself tell tell us about yourself like uh who you are where you're from what you do some things so we can learn who helen is okay um i don't even know where to start uh i live in las vegas nevada uh i have a wonderful husband 46 years uh I, my my career i was in the gaming in the casino uh i was um um manager, pit manager, table games. So I did that for 30 years, almost 35 years. And uh, I have a, one dog, one beautiful daughter, and I have five grandsons and two granddaughters. Wow. And yeah, and my parents are still alive at 89 years old. So my, my life has been really awesome, but I, I um, just uh, anything I know about Helen Gilmore is that I just love the Lord and I love people. I'm a people person. Um, I could talk to a wall and get a response because I love people. I love to talk. I love to share whatever I have going on as myself, my personality, you know? Wow. You know, I've, I'm, I have been privileged to meet a lot of people in my life, but I've never met anyone who was in gaming. So when you say a pit boss, tell us like what, what that is and like what a day in the life of a pit boss when you're at work, what does that look like? Okay, that is, my job is, you know, dealers, you have dealers and you have players. 
Uh, I'm overseer of, of both. My job is to uh, watch for cheating. My job is to give credit if players need money. My job is to um, uh, is organizing um, uh, the whole through the whole day of, of accommodating both sides at all times. Wow. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm saying? Win or lose, keeping track of what is expected by the Game Control Board, what is expected by the RS, taking out certain games had taxes, some doesn't. And uh, it just depends on if a person wins 10,000 or if a person wins a million. Uh, I've, I've given um, credit and money also to players. Uh, for like Phil Ivy and different ones that come in and play in different, you know, um, celebrities that come in and play, and then we have to be in special areas with them and giving them special credit and special attention. I've done all of those things. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's exciting, but it's also um, a very um, stressful job, I should say. Right. Because you have a lot of uh, people being over you, and then you're amazed how people will, will cheat. You have that to look out for. You have uh, My job is to look out for all of the above. Now, are you still actively in gaming or are you retired? No. You retired from it. Okay. COVID retired me. COVID. Because uh, COVID we're... changed the whole uh, spectrum of, of not only the world, but Las Vegas, right? Yeah. When the virus came in, um, they laid everyone off. They, mm. they brought us in the office at a time and said, this is what you have to do. Here's the papers for you to draw on employment. Uh, we're laying you guys off right now. Uh, those that want to take extra time can take some extra time off. This is what they were doing before they shut down the hotel. They were calling us in one at a time. Wow. And then when they shut down the hotel, uh, when they shut down the city, then they called us all back and said, uh, you're all laid off until further notice. And then they gave us uh, a severance pay. They paid us so much for so many months and, and kept us on the insurance uh, until this was over. Wow. Yeah. Are you, are you looking to go? You think that it's something that you're looking to go back to or what do you feel? Uh, my my employer wants me to come back, but no, I'm not going back. Wow. I'm, I'm done. I'm 65 years old, so I'm not going to go back. Well, you don't look a day over 23, Helen. I tell God you. bless you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I have another question for you. Can you tell us about like what's the most you've ever seen someone win and like the most you've ever seen someone lose and like what happened? It, it, it's amazing. The most I've ever seen someone lose is probably been, if I go way back, it's been millions. Millions? In play, yes, in one play. Did it's it's been millions. Huh? Were they devastated? No, they were calm and cool. And like they just walk right out. They put their money in what they call what we call a cash box, a cash deposit. They bring the money with them. They put it in a cash deposit box at the at the uh, cashier's cage. Then they put it there. So now it's uh, they get credit. So, but our credit will tell us if if it's the credit that we're giving them or if it's cash deposit credit. So if it's cash deposit credit, they can take out as much as they want. We never say anything, so they can they can lose millions. But now, if you come in and don't go through that proper procedure, you're only allowed to buy in at the cashier's cage ten thousand dollars. You're only allowed to lose ten thousand cash in a twenty four hour period. Really? If you refuse to give out any social or any personal identification about yourself, you can only lose ten thousand dollars. If you lose if and our job is to track to make sure they don't lose ten thousand and one dollar because now we're dealing with the game control board and right. we're dealing with with everything now as we're dealing with a lot of other things right. so the most i've seen people win is, 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 is it's millions and then they don't even shake they don't even care 20 30 it don't matter i've seen that much money wow yes and what about and, have you ever seen people just like um just devastated once they've lost? I've seen some with personalities and attitudes, yes. And then we can't do anything right to please them. And then they want to they want to take it out on the, the dealers and they want to take it out on the, the, even if a player, if another customer just looks at them. Right. And we've had to call security and we had to escort them to their rooms. We've been through that as well. 
Wow. This is so yeah. fascinating, Ms. Helen. I can, I'm going to ask you tons of questions. I can sit here and ask you questions all night. This is so, so intriguing. So, all right, I, I'll tell you what, and then we'll, we'll get into some other questions. I know a lot of people who are watching this have been to Las Vegas, visited Las Vegas, or may be desiring to come to Las Vegas. So, yeah. can you give us the help, Miss Helen, MVP, that your favorite, tell us what your favorite hotel is, tell us what your favorite restaurant is, and tell us what your favorite thing to do in Las Vegas. So, if we ever are out there, then we can be certain to try the Helen top, Miss Helen top three. You know, I had a lot of favorite restaurants before COVID, of course, but a lot of them didn't reopen. Um, I loved, I loved the, the buffet they had at Caesar's Palace. It was a brand new, just opening. Bacchanal? And they had every, I, I, I went there, I, I've been there several okay. times. And, and the way they did that, and you know, buffets are just plain Jane. You know, you don't get the, what you, the hot, top notch. Right. But this one at Caesar's Palace had just opened up and it was one of the most fabulous buffets I had ever been to. Okay. And they had from the best, the best meats, the best everything. And they had selection and everything was hot and they only had out small portions so you could get your food warm and, and taste like you fix it at home. And right. this was awesome. That was one of my greatest restaurants. All right. That so I placed, so like Caesar Pal Caesar's Palace buffet. We're going to put that on the list. Yeah. Okay. Right. What's your favorite hotel in Vegas? My favorite hotel that I lived, liked was the um, Encore. Loved it. Loved Encore. 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 That's my number one hotel, Encore. I loved nice. everything about the Encore. The rooms, everything. I love about the Encore. I've even stayed there. I love it. I agree. What's your, oh, favorite, thing? What's your favorite thing to do in Las Vegas? Like for people maybe who are visiting and they want to say, you know, we want to have a good time. And, you know, what would you say? Well, I don't like to stay on the casino, on the strip. I, I get away from the strip. Okay. I like to go, we love to go to Mount Charleston because they have a lodge up there. We love to go up there. My husband and I love to go out on the lake because my husband likes to take the boat out. We go out on the lake. And I love to do that kind of stuff, things like that, that I like to do. And okay. my husband loves to fish, fishing. But um, sightseeing and riding around, looking at some of the luxury homes and things that they have in Las Vegas. That's yeah. the kind of things that I like to do. Okay. Well, that's you. Hey, you've schooled us on Las Vegas. Thank you, Miss Helen. And okay. I want to say, wow. yeah. And I want to tell them one thing else sure. about the about the gaming. Sure. There's uh, people always concerned about paying taxes when they win. Most of the times, it's the slot machines that that you get to have to pay taxes when you win a certain amount of money. But the table games, uh, regular blackjack, crap tables. If you win a million, two million, ten thousand, five thousand. There is no taxes. You're kidding. No. Wow. I never I never thought that. I always thought that like if you if it was over a certain amount, you had to pay it. Not those those two games, no. Wow. Now crazy. poker games, if you play um Ultimate Texas Hold'em and you play those other live games like uh three card poker, Stem Punk Club, it, there's a tax on those depending on what you win. The crafts and regular blackjack. Wow. Well, you know, I've, I've never been a gambler. You know, I don't have anything against people who do it, but I just don't like. Uh, it just never Maybe. did anything to me. Yeah, I rather when I go to Vegas, it's all about the shows, the food, and just being in those opulent hotels. Yeah, yeah. Just amazing. All right, great. So, our MVP, you you lost forty two pounds in thirty eight days. Woo. Um, when you started the process, what did did you have a certain goal in mind that you want like like when you signed up for the process what were you looking to accomplish 160. so i wanted to be at 160. give, give us context so we because we don't know how much weight that is like where did you start i started at 193 almost 200. i was at 197 so i was at 193. so you wanted to lose 37 33 plus pounds right i want to get 60. 160. That was my, that's what I put in for. Wow. How does it make you feel that you eclipsed your own uh, goal, Miguel? I was crazy. shocked. I, I, I was, Tiffany, my, my leader, Tiffany was awesome. And I, I, I was shocked that, that I wasn't paying attention to the weight. I was paying attention. I was focused on trying to do things right. What my leader was telling me. Wow. Now, talk to us about the process. How did you find out about it? 
and um, what made you sign up? Uh, a friend of mine came to Las Vegas on vacation. Uh, her name was Carolyn Maxey, and she was telling me about she was telling me about it because her husband was making fun of her about how she was eating. And she said, I can't, I gotta do this, gotta do that. And she started mentioning your name. And I said, oh, that sounds interesting. And I said, I need to lose some weight. I said, I might try that. And so then she took my phone and just registered me. Did she? She and, just registered and here me. here you are the MVP. <laughs> she registered me and, and I wasn't like, ready to be registered. And she kept asking me all these questions and I was like, oh, she, I, and I was answering the questions like she was telling me, I answered all the questions. And then when she got back home from her vacation, she said, okay, did you get your detox? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did you get an email? And I'm like, email for what? Because I wasn't ready. And I was like, email for what? Just Dr. Joe, they'll send you an email. They'll do these things. And I was like, no, no, I didn't. And then when I looked in, I had an email. And so then when I got that email, then that's when I started following through with the process. Right. And that's when I ordered my juices and I ordered, I started doing that stuff. But if it wasn't for her, and then I called her back and said, no, I changed my mind. I'm not going to do it. And she said, Sister Helen, you have to. And that's yeah, what got me started. What a friend. And, what a friend. And, and here you are, the MVP, Ms. Helen. And ain't that's what a friend. What a friend. The front door, right? <laughs> <laughs> I went all the way. Front door. All right. All right. So. Tell us about your team. Tell us about your leader. I know you uh, mentioned Tiffany, but tell us who, who Tiffany is and the name of your group and et cetera. Let's shout them out. Yeah, shout out to the overcomers. Yay! Shout out. <laughs> and, and, my, and my leader, Tiffany, Tiffany Dover. I love her. She She's was amazing. awesome. She's awesome. She took me through roller coaster things that I wasn't aware of. And my buddy, which was Sheila, and just the whole group. I shout out to them because my group was awesome. We were just, um, I would listen to them and I have pages of notes where they were helping me with the do's and the don'ts. And uh, they would mention stuff that, that I was already going through and I would write it down. And then I would go after our Zoom session was over, I would go through my notes and I would, this is what they were doing for me. So my group carried me all the way through this. That's amazing. They were now, awesome. How did when you all right? So we know how you signed up for the process. Uh, one of your friends who was in uh, came to Vegas, signed you up, etc. So you start going through the process. You get in your group. What did it feel like when you first got in it? And like, how did it make you feel? Were you like, well, this is what I thought? How were your initial feelings at the very, very beginning once you had been placed? I was ready to back out. I really, what I didn't feel that I could commit myself mm -hmm. uh, with the detox. And um, I, I had some obstacles I had to cross the very first day of the, the that I had to, um, I think the 6th of June, we had to start our detoxing. Right. I had I had to, um, uh, had some things to go through. My husband went to the hospital that day. Just some things were going on. And I just called my buddy and said, look, I'm down. I'm not going to do it. I quit. I can't. I, I just quit. And I, um, I was feeling like I couldn't do it. I couldn't commit myself. And this was going to be too much for me. Mm -hmm. Counting stuff and doing stuff. I just knew I couldn't do it. Right. So what, what got what got you past that? Because clearly, not only did you not quit, but you killed it in a great way. How did what what got you past that? Uh, Doctor Joe, you're looking at a person that that loved to eat out all the time, yes. hated to cook, yep, uh, especially cooking three meals a day. Hated right. to cook, hated to read labels when you go in the store to buy stuff, right? And so. What got me was that I um I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the question. Um, what got me was that I um started praying and committing myself, saying that this could work. Uh, I want to do this to show my husband because he has some health issues. And I said, if I can do it, then he could do it. And then I started saying, I'm doing this for him instead of myself. And looking at his conditions were more serious than mine. And then I said, once I get it in, get it in me, mm -hmm. then I can get it in him. 
Wow. And that's what inspired me to do it more is for him because I've been with him since elementary school. And so I've really? been with him all my life. So wow. I was inspired to help him. We went to kindergarten together and then we got married when we were 19. It's so an amazing, it's such an amazing story. So it was for him. That's elementary what it, school, forget high school, sweetheart. Ella, pre-K. Pre-K. <laughs> We've been together since kindergarten. That is so cute. <laughs> what amazing. Yeah. So yes. is your, I know your daughter was there. She still, is she still? Yeah, she's right here. Yes. Would, would she mind coming in the frame? <laughs> Come on, honey. <laughs> Alina, correct? Alana. Alana. Yeah. This is Miss Helen's beautiful daughter, Alana. You can see where Alana gets it from. And Alana, I have a question. Alana is assisting her mother. And Alana, I have a question. When you watched your mother go through the process, how did it feel to you to see your mother working on herself? Um, I thought it was amazing because my mom, her entire life has always done things for everyone else. So a big challenge for her has always been just having something for herself. Um, she, she gives and gives to other people, whether it's the church or me or my kids or whatever it is. Um, she always does that. So she, she finally had something for her and she would send me pictures of her food every day. And, and she got me all excited to do it. And, and um, she was just so happy. So it was, it was exciting. And she actually had my kids there for the summer in Vegas when she started. So she had five, four boys there with her um, little ones, ages four to 12. Wow. And she was still able to do it. So I just kept encouraging her and she's, she's just my um, inspiration. So now if she can do it, I feel like there's no excuse <laughs> for me. I got to get it together. <laughs> it's amazing. Let me, let me ask you one more question. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. When you found, when your mother told you that she was the MVP, how did it, I'm sure you were just stoked. Like, yeah. hey, mom, how did you feel? So the funny thing is she was actually, she came to where we live to visit and she was actually cooking us one of her meals um, at the time. And so she always has you on, on the phone and she's got her headphones in and she's watching your videos. And she just said to me, you know what? I don't think he, he is such a cool guy, but I don't think I'll ever meet him. But I just think he's so awesome. Oh, and as she's saying that, it says MVP. And she's like, OK, let's see who it is. And it says her name. And she just starts screaming. So we're like, <laughs> what, what What? happened? We didn't know what was happening. So we're like, Mom, what happened? And we go in there. And she showed us her name. And she was all excited. And it just she was so happy. So it oh, made me so happy wow. for her. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, thank you for being on. And thank you for assisting her, Halana, Halana correct? <laughs> Helena, yes, okay. of course. I, thank okay. you. All right, thank you. She, that, <laughs> hey, I, you know what, Miss Helen, your 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 daughter is a beautiful young lady, but she, I see where she gets it from, and you you just pass all those genes on to her. <laughs> so, how does it feel to know that your daughter is so proud of you? That has to make you feel great. I do. I yes, I do all I can for to keep her proud of me. I do all I can. All my life, from a baby up, I've been always doing things to keep her proud of me and to never disrespect anything that would be disrespectful. Uh, she used to teach me about not saying bad words. She said, Mom, because you never said them, I, I can't say them. You know, I mean, I did all I could in raising her as a child, and right. keeping her involved in things and teaching yeah. her about commitment. If she got into something, I would never let her come out. I, you finish it out, and when it's over, then you try something new. I always believed in that. Don't quit. If you start it, you got to go all the way. That, that, that is amazing. Now, do you remember the day that I called you? Yes. <laughs> I was cooking. Tell, tell, the people, tell, the, tell the people that day after, because I was <gasps> congratulating you. Can you, can you tell oh, them what, maybe what you were doing? <laughs> and Dr. Joe, I never answer strange numbers that I don't know who they I, are. I know. <laughs> and that, that number, and I was like, who is this calling me? <laughs> and I said, I guess I'll answer it. I was cooking one of the meals at the time, fixing dinner for my, and I, I started almost screamed. Oh, Dr. Jones, call me. <laughs> I could not believe it. That was so awesome because I had said to him, like, I just wanted to thank you personally myself because um, when you said that we had to have it in us all the time, yes. we have it all, we've had, we have it in us. Right. We just didn't have the tools to go through what we needed to do. Right. And so when I realized how easy it was to, to start preparing my meals and how I didn't need to buy a big gallon of, of um, 
what's that that oil that we always buy the vegetable oil yeah, i buy yeah, to fry my foods yeah. and to cook my stuff i would buy all that stuff and do all that stuff and when i found out how you taught us how to get past that right right it was awesome just That's awesome true. But I'm I was so, screaming and, and cooking at the same time. I'm so proud of you. That that's just awesome. Oh, um, let me and, I, and it's, you're such a a great interview. Um, let me rewind a bit. Let's go back to the pre work. So okay. once you contemplated quitting, and you yes. talked yourself through it, and yes. made up in your mind, okay, Helen, we're going to do it. You're in the pre work. How did the pre work help you? What did you feel about it? It helped me to, how did I feel about it? I felt that getting into that, I had to prioritize things, mm -hmm. you know? What's first, second, third, and once I started to prioritize things the way they're supposed to be done, then that made the pre-work, made me understand it more, and I was able to get into it and get involved in it and give it my all. Mm. Is that the right answer? It, it, it got you right. It got you ready to succeed. It got me, it, it, Dr. Joe, it got me so ready to where I have gotten to the point where I, I was afraid to even cheat. I was so ready. I would pour the kids a bowl of cereal. And sometimes now some will fall off the bowl and you might want to pick it up and eat right. it. I'd say, oh, no, I can't have that. And I would throw it out. I mean, this is how, and they had cookies and chips and they were eating corn dogs and hot dogs and I want McDonald's and I had them before I start. I got them on May 27th mm -hmm. and then I kept them up until the 14th of um, July. Mm -hmm. So I had them doing the whole process and I would still cook their food separate if it was rice or whatever it was. And then I would cook my food separate from theirs and I never ate one bite of their food. That is amazing. And, and, <laughs> and I was and you got the results, right? I got the result. That is awesome. All right, let's talk about, I want to talk to you about um, what was, now a lot of people, believe it or not, feel that when you get older, you can't lose weight. Now, you're far from old. You're 65 years of age. Yeah. And you shed 42 pounds in six weeks. What advice would you give someone who, who says, well, I can't do that? Would you, would you, is it a such thing as being, I mean, what do you feel? There's no such thing as you can't. Right. You can do it. Anybody can do it. You just got to put your heart and your mind and your soul into it and do it. You cannot let, and don't let anyone, anyone tell them that you can't. Mm -hmm. I have, I have my, my poor husband. I have clothes in my closet, and my husband just said to me, You'll never get in that outfit again. You'll never be able to wear that. You might as well just give all that stuff away. And now I can wear those things. There you go. So I would tell them to never give up. Don't ever stop. And and don't think, like I said, I'm 65 years old. Right. And you're as good as you feel. And if you want to stay healthy, and if you want to be here for a while, if you have whatever purpose you want to be here, then you have to take care of your body. You have to do this. Right. This is not a joke. This is not a game. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you need to eat to live. Mm -hmm. And not live to eat. Not live to eat. And Ms. Helen, um, there are a lot of people watching who have re pre-registered. As you know, people like you have made way for them. We had 1,700 people calling register in 48 hours. I mean, literally, we were going to leave registration open all the all month, but all the seats were gone. We literally had to shut it down, create a waiting list. To that person who's who's watching, they've pre-registered, and they're going to get the same opportunity to go through the modules and do everything that to hopefully become place. What advice would you give them? knowing now and maybe you can tell them now because of the wisdom that you've been able to to collect would you give the is there any things to look out for or advice you would give them i would tell them because i know it was hard for me it's not easy right it's, it's definitely easy. not it's definitely not easy it's not a game don't play with it 
Number one, you're playing with your life. Right. But don't play with it. You come in full force and ready to fight because you're going to have the enemy is is out there. They're going to be out there attacking you on every little every little possible chance they get. They're going to do something or something's going to happen where you're going to feel that you can't do this, but you can do it. And be prepared for the enemy because the enemy stayed on me, mm -hmm. stayed on me one thing after another. I, I tell you, I lost one to COVID. So I got it. My husband got sick. Things. My daughter got sick. All through all this stuff, I'm in the process of all this, and all this stuff is going on. I'm in the ER, sitting in the ER, still trying to stick with this. Don't let the enemy get. Don't don't let the enemy have it. Mm -hmm. Don't let him take control. Do That's not. Amazing. That is absolutely amazing. Well, Miss Helen, you have been an amazing guest. I'm so proud of you. I'm so glad of. Um, that you got value out of the process. I'm so glad that um, you positively impacted your beautiful daughter and your amazing uh, family. And that's great. That's what this is all about. It's about it's about the in, the positive infectious nature of change. You know, yes. when we hear the word uh, infection, you know, we we think negative. You know, COVID uh, virus, mm -hmm. but there is a positive. Uh, uh, infection. And that is when a person changes for the better, you change everyone around you. Even the people who won't do what you do are looking at you. You know, like for your, for example, when your daughter Helena said, you know, I, because of mom, I want to do this. Just think about all the other people in your life. So I want to congratulate you on your amazing accomplishment. Thank you for being my guest. We're so proud of you. Um, you are an amazing person. And Hopefully this year, Lynette and I will be in Las Vegas. And if we're there, I'm going to have to be certain we hopefully can have a lunch or or at least meet and we can see each other in the in, in the flesh. I would look forward to that. And my daughter signed up already. Yay, my daughter's registered. So All right. Hold on. Can't wait for All right. We pray for you and your family and for the village. I'll keep everyone in my prayers. And thank you guys for having me. I have really been inspired and I'm just, just, I, I have, I have an addiction and my addiction is Dr. Joe's <laughs> journey plan. You I am addicted to the whole thing. I'm addicted to it. I cannot go, I cannot go off. I try to get off of it and I can't because I have an addiction now. So I'm, I'm on it all the well, way. I'm, I'm glad to be the drug dealer of positive. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Miss Helen. Well, we love you, and Helena, God bless you, and uh, send our blessings to your entire family. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you for being a part. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Our uh, risers, 2021 summer session MVP, Miss Helen Gilmore. Isn't she a beautiful spirit? Isn't she? Not only her but her beautiful daughter and their amazing family. Congratulations to Miss Helen. Uh, she wears the badgers. She wears the badge of risers well. So we salute her, salute to her leader and to her group and to her buddy and to all the individuals that uh, her friend who told her to sign up. This is just fantabulous. It's great gang that we have such an amazing, um, group of people is uh, it's amazing that we have um just just our village and you guys who've come through it you guys who are in it and those of you who are to come make it special all right and understand that to those of you who've signed up understand that you are you are embarking upon something special don't don't to miss helen's point don't mess it up by not taking it seriously it's about you. Do something for yourself. Did you hear Helena when she said, my mother is so giving. She gives to me. She gives to her grandchildren. She gives to people at the church. Helena said that it was great to see her mother do something for herself. We live in a world where people care about everybody and everything else but ourselves. We give our cares and energies to our children, to our spouses people we date. We give our energy to toxic people. We give our energy to our employers. 
We give our energy to people who don't even care anything about us. But it's not until you do something for yourself when you become the byproduct of the work exclusively. Okay? So I want to, you know, to all of you who are looking to come through, I'm glad and blase, blase, and that's awesome. And I look forward to working with you all. But I look forward to working to the people who come wanting to change and not trying to show up because of what you saw somebody else do. Forget what somebody else did. Get it for yourself. Don't take advantage of this. He, nothing is promised. Nothing is promised. What if that was the last session for whatever the reason? What if what if we never see tomorrow? What if something happens in the world to where the internet stops working? You don't know. I don't we don't know. So you have to come into this saying, if I don't do this for anyone else, I'm doing this for me. And there are two things I want to share with you. I told you I had something to tell you. I told you that I'm going to give you a tip of what you do when you mess up. This week, I deviated from my own plan. I tripped. I slipped. I got a certain day that I set for my cheat meal. And on a different day, I went to and ate a different meal on two different occasions more than what I told myself. I did. The same person that has taught you, the same person who has been, who, who has authored something that thousands of people have come through. I, the leader, your leader, I slipped, I tripped, I messed up. Some of those bad habits rose up within me. Scale went up. And I said to myself, what am I going to do? And I said to myself, you know what? I screwed up. I messed up. I made bad decisions. So the only way for me to fix them is to do exactly what I taught them. Get back on it. I went to my trusty book. I got on the scale. I wrote down the weight. And that day I made a promise to myself. You're not going to get to your lowest goal weight and screw this up, Joe. You're not. You've worked too hard. And see, it wasn't about y'all. It wasn't like, oh, I'm being embarrassed. You know, people looking up to me. They call me a guru. I'm this, I'm that. Not to say that that's what I am, but like at the end of the day, it wasn't about that. It was about me. It wasn't, it, it, you see, it wasn't about the facade. It wasn't the ego of, oh, that's my brand. Forget that. The brand didn't put in the work. The brand wasn't getting up at 4.30 in the morning, uh, getting it done. The brand wasn't going to bed hungry sometimes, drinking water when I wanted a martini or an extra glass of wine. The brand wasn't doing that. I did it. And I'm just like you. There's a gun butt who's inside of me right now that I've got to kill on a daily basis. You understand? We all have it and it never leaves. You're never going to get to the point to where it's just all oh, effortless. You're going to be more engaged. You're going to get better results. 
You're going to get, you know, the scale is going to go down. You're going to know what to do, but it's never going to get easy. That's why it's spiritual. So what did I do? Never again. I learned a lesson. You know what my lesson was? The lesson that I learned was the feeling of letting myself down. You understand that? That's the lesson. Not that I let you down or Lynette down or, but I let me down. And I don't like that feeling of letting myself down. So I'm just like you. <laughs> I'm just like you. That may be why I'm, I'm good at it, because I'm just like you. I'm struggling just like you. So for all of you all, you've been out of it a couple of weeks. You fall off the wagon. You ate too much. You didn't follow the plan. It's okay. But I need you to not give yourself an out just because nobody's looking over your shoulder because at the end of the day, you've let you down. You have let you down. Now it's time to pick yourself back up. How we pick ourselves back up? The same way I got to pick myself up. Got back up of my behind. I set a plan for this week, just like I taught you. I'm gonna do this on this day. I'm gonna do that on this on that day. And I'm gonna fight until I get back to where I was. That's when I'm at ground zero. And when I get back to ground zero, I'll celebrate my first victory of getting back to where I need to be. And then when I get there, I'm going to get back on track and every week keep on doing what I'm supposed to do. And then every time I get to the point where I want to fall off the wagon, I'm going to think back to the time when I fell off, how I made myself feel, how I let myself down. And that feeling, I'm going to remember it. I'm going to remember it so I won't do it again. You see? So to all of you who are out there, you're struggling, you're screwing up, you're messing up. That's fine. Now, I don't want to sit up here and, and, and be like this, this uh, dandelion saying, oh, it's OK. It's, a, you know, be go be in your truth. No. If you've been a gut and butt and you've made mistakes, stop making them now. Don't beat yourself down. Get back up. Go back to your notes. Call your buddy. Call your group. Do whatever you got to do. Get back on the wagon and fight like hell to get back to where you were. That's your first victory. That's your first victory. Get back to where you were if you fell off. Then when you get back to where you were, that's when the game starts over again. I'm at ground zero. Learn my lesson. And see, whenever you mess up, Whenever you trip up and slip up, it's never worth it. It's like, excuse me for making this secular comparison, but it's like being at the nightclub. We all been in the club. You see that good looking guy and you, you see that good looking girl and, you know, you've had a couple of drinks and, you know, they look, everybody look good when liquor is flowing and it's dark. Y'all feel me? Everybody looks good when liquor is flowing and it's dark. It's like when you see that person, they look all good and she look good and he look good. And then you, 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 you make a decision. Let's just put it that way. Keep it clean. You make a decision about something that you do. Then the next morning you say to yourself, now, why would I do that? <laughs> Why did I do it? And you're like, man, I, I wasted my time. I shouldn't have done it. It wasn't worth it. I didn't even like it. Maybe you did. Maybe you weren't. I need to go to the doctor, get checked. Who knows? But the point is, after you do it, 
you realize it wasn't even worth it. It was it wasn't even worth it. Do I have any do I have any truthful people who ever been there? That's how it is when you fall off the wagon in terms of your lifestyle, when you when you get off the wagon of how you you're eating like you've been taught to eat and the water and the consistency and the discipline. When you get off of it because you thought you were missing something, you realize I'm not missing nothing. You get hot at night, you sweating. You don't feel good. You bloat it. You can't even say I'm lean because you're not. You know, it's, it's not even worth it. So for those of you who've fallen off, stand back up. Get back to ground zero. Fight like hell. You know what to do. You can do it. I believe in every last one of you. Fight like hell until you get back to ground zero. If you got to go a couple of weeks without cheating until you can get back where you are quickly, do it. But don't let this window escape you. Get back what you've lost. I'm right there with you. I work too hard to get to where I am, just like you. Too hard. And every pound lost, you got to fight like hell to get it off. And he got to fight like hell to keep it off. I know it, man. I, that's my whole life. It's my whole life. But I'm not going to let me down. I'm not going to start this next session a pound bigger than I was when I left it off. It's 195 pounds. I'm not going to start it a pound more. Why? I'm not doing that because that's the goal that I got for me. You see what I'm saying? Now, last thing I told you I'm going to tell you and I'm done. Sometimes when you've been on this journey as long as I have, you learn tricks along the way. Tricks to help get you out of tight spots. Tricks to, 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 to move you to where you need to be. And for me, it's great because, shout out to uh, Kim Moore. I'm glad this helped you. And shout out, um, yeah. Tricks, not only that, but tricks to help that I can use to help people. See, if you, if you watch me, I'm not out here taking tips, making books to sell it. Now, I'm going to write some more books in my future, but that's not, I'm not, I'm not sitting up here learning things and then thinking about how to monetize. No, I want, I want, I want you to have it. But there's something that I do when I'm in a place like I am. Today, like I've just told you, I'm trying to get back to ground zero. I'm trying to hit a goal. Most times what I'm about to show you is something that I do in the short term. And what I do is this. I make, look at this. This is what I call an accountability chart. It's bootleg. It comes out of my, my weight uh, diary. I got my pen. And what I do when I, when I fall off the wagon and I'm trying to get back. So I put my magic number, 195. That's where I'm trying to, that's where I'm trying to get back to because that's where I had worked towards to get down. And if you look around it, you'll see seven little boxes. In order for me to hit that, I got to be perfect. All seven of those boxes. What's perfect? Perfect means that I'm following through with the plan 
that I set out for myself. Whatever your plan is, because everybody got a different plan. Maybe your plan is to have one cheat meal on a certain day or or to do this or to, to get four workouts in or to get two days of walking. Whatever your plan is, the, the, the box is I don't sign it unless I do exactly what I have planned for to get back to where I need to be. And see, all of you all who have come through, you know what to do. And if those of y'all who've gone through pre-registration, you'll learn how to do all this later. I'm not really talking to y'all not to exclude y'all. Y'all can listen. You can listen passively. But I'm talking to the people who are in it, to all of my leaders, to all of my participants who just graduated, to all of my uh, butterflies and legends, all the folk who come through who know what to do, okay? It's seven boxes. It's how many days in a week? Seven days. So let's say, for instance, the top box is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You see, each day. Let's say, for instance, I started this today. Right before I go to bed, if I've done everything that I'm supposed to do on Sunday, that is a part of the plan that I've made for myself, that's going to help get me back to where I want to be. What do I do? I sign my name. That simple. That simple. Because when I get in the bed at night, I want to be able to get in that bed knowing I did everything in my power to do what I set out to do to get what I wanted to get. Monday. Whatever, I, whatever my goal is, was it a certain workout? Was it a certain time? Was it eating perfectly? Did I get my workout in? Did I get my water in? Did I get all of the things that I know I needed to do to get back to where I need to be? Guess what I do? Sign it. See? Tuesday comes. I got friends coming in town, hypothetically. Oh, my girlfriend coming in town. My boyfriend coming in town. My, my guys, my, my girls, whatever, coming in town. And you, you, you've gone all day. Perfect. You got your workout in. Did everything you need to do. They all go out to the club. You go with them. They all eat chicken. Have a wing. Have a drink. But that wing and that drink is not going to be a part of the plan that's going to allow you to sign off when your gun butt get home. You're going to be thinking, hey, I've been perfect for two days. And I want to go home and sign off on my little bootleg sheet. Some of some folks are laughing at me. That's fine. They can laugh all they want. And you're going to be thinking, I want to sign off. I want to be perfect. I want to get what I, because I did, I'm doing this for me. And you make a conscious decision because you got another layer of what? Accountability. This little piece of cheap paper. It's holding your behind accountable. And you say, you know what? I'm good. Because you think I got to sign off. I can't. I, I, if I eat a wing, if I have a sip, if I if I, if, if I deviate just a bit, I can't sign off when I get home. You ought to be thinking about it. So you do not. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm having my water. I'm good. You go home. You sustain it. Sign off. By the time Wednesday comes, You've been perfect for three straight days. The devil in hell is not going to deviate you because you're so entrenched to what you set out to do. You refuse to give in. They can offer you every platter at every Red Lobster in Houston's. And you're not going to deviate one bit because you know you've been perfect for three days. And I, I can't stop now. And you sign off. Thursday comes. And you sign off. Friday comes. Sign off. Saturday comes. Sign off. Next thing you know, three days from now, five days, seven days, you look up and guess where I am? Right back to where I need to be.
Why? Because I did what I was supposed to. And I used this method. See, human beings psychologically like awards. Have you ever noticed? Have you ever seen someone who is fully grown get a certificate or a medal? You would think you've given them a million dollars. I remember one time we had a session and a group of folk, a group did not get their certificates when they graduated from 40 turn up. Y'all, they were they were so mad. They wanted their certificate. This is psychological. It's the psyche of human beings. It's how we're wired. We like awards. This is why Facebook has all the badges and the stars and the thumbs and all the colors because it, 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 it feeds into a certain visceral nature of a human being. And as cheesy as what this may appear, and see the thing about it, you can make it however elaborate you want it to be. You can get colors and Maybe every day you got a different sticker. I don't care what you do. Put a green sticker on Monday, a yellow sticker for Tuesday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you laugh. You can make it digital. You can make it animated. It doesn't matter. But it's just little tools. And I, I, I use them when I need to kind of get back on track and I want to do it quickly. I want to be I want to be where I need to be this time next week. I'm gonna play, I'm not trying to get there tomorrow. It's going to be a long game and that's fine. I know I got a I got a plan. I'm going to deviate a couple things, but I got to be flawless for 7 days. You see what I'm saying? So this is free game. Dr. Joe is giving you cuz I want you to win. I want you to be successful. I'm one of the few people in your life that genuine, most folk around y'all don't want to see you win. Get mad all you want. Most people in your, 90% of the folk that you consider friends don't even want to see you win. Facts. Most of the folk you got in your life act funny when something good happened to you. And some of them folk got the same blood in their veins. And you know I'm telling the truth. I want to see y'all win. Lynette wants to see y'all win. We want to see y'all win. But trust me, we screw up just like you do. I'm not one of these guys who, who is a fitness guy and been fit all my life. Have you ever seen this? It's a show where these trainers who are training basically gut and butts and, and they're training these gut and butts, but they've never been a gut and butt. So they gain all this weight, right? So they can get an inkling of what it feels like to be a gut and butt so they can lose it quickly. But it don't work like that because weight over a long period of time and I'm not talking about just eating whatever you want for, for, for two months to gain 40 pounds so you can lose it. No, it has an emotional impact on the psyche of a person. I grew up a gut and butt. I was in college as a gut and butt. My formative years becoming a man was a cute gut and butt teddy bear. I lived my whole life uh, uh, giving reasonings why I was a gut and butt. I'm big bone. It runs in the family. I lived my life around gut and butt because I had a tailor that could tailor my suit. I still look nice. I was a I was a big well-dressed gun, but that's all I was.
So I've been where each of you are. And guess what? I still ain't there. I'm still not there. I'm still not where I ultimately want to be. And that's all right. Because it makes me just like you. I got a gun butt on the inside of me saying, Joe, Joe, come back, come back, come back. You can eat what you want. Come back. Just like you. And see, when you've been big and when you've struggled with weight and you've struggled with these things, it has a different type of emotional manifestation on your psyche. So you take the tip that I've given you. Put your own twist on it. De deviate it. Maybe you can. Most times when I do this, I do it for about a week at a time. Because most times I'm a week out from where I need to be. I don't play with that. If I'm three pounds heavier than what I don't play that. I got to get it back tight and right. Right? Most times that's how I use mine. You may want to use yours for, for two weeks or three weeks or four days or five days. But most times I use this for a short stint. I just need something to get me back. I got to get back to the place and space where I was to continue to get what I want. So you take this tip, you apply it, you use it in whatever way that helps you. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. And, and if I had one suggestion, never sign it until the end of the day. You got to earn that signature. When you sign it, it means that I have nailed it. Y'all feel what I'm saying? So I love each one of y'all. Congratulations. Again, shout out to Helen Gilmore, our MVP for being my guest. She was an amazing interviewee. I really enjoyed uh, uh, interviewing her. It was great. I hope you've enjoyed the tips that I've given you. Take them, use them, apply them in any way that you see that's necessary. I want to see y'all win. Uh, to all of you who pre-registered for the 40-day turn up, 1,700 of you all are signed up. It does not mean your seat is guaranteed. What it means is we're not accepting any more people now, but that you will have first dibs and the first opportunity to do what needs to be done in order to secure a seat. We've already been communicating with you through our uh, communication team. Uh, you'll be getting updates from us throughout the month of August. We're waiting very, very soon. I'll have more updates on Transform. I'll make that those announcements in our uh, closed Facebook groups. Follow us on Instagram at JourneyLifeTV. A lot of updates are made there, a lot of pictures, a lot of before and afters, a lot of testimonials, a lot of videos, a lot of great things that I'm certain that you would probably want to see. You can follow us on Journey Life. TV. To those of you all who are like, wow, I don't want to be a part of this. I didn't get a chance to pre-register. How do I know, learn about more of the future sessions? You can go to journeylife.tv. You go to journeylife.tv. We go to journeylife.tv, which you see on the screen. There is a list that you can become a part of. All right. Journeylife.tv. And once you get there, you'll be able to see all of those things. Many of you are getting your shirts. They are being delivered as we speak. Our team has done a great job, and I'm certain that you'll be seeing updates as well as their emails for you support in each of the groups to make it easy for you just so you can see and know where things are. Love each of you. Have an amazing day. What a great village chat. God willing, I'll see you on the next one. Peace, family.